What's up guys, Lucas, Whiskey One Bravo Django Romeo here. A few weeks back I did a video on how to safely install your radio into your car without damaging the car. Some neat little tips and tricks there. If you haven't checked it out, I recommend taking a look at it. Um, one of the things we talked about on there was how to hook up your radio to power within the car, how to hook it up to your battery. We talked about two of the major methods, which is either to go through the cigarette port of the car and you know it'll turn off and turn off the car on most models, or whether to the hardwire it directly to the battery, which is better especially for higher powered radios. Um, and it's kind of the preferred method. But there is a potential downside there, right? If it's hooked up right to the battery and it's going to run even when the car is off, you know, the upside is that you can use it when the car is off. The downside is that you can use it when the car is off. That altimeter is not running, um, and altimeter, alternator, is not running, and it's not going to be charging up the battery as you're using the power. Um, so you could potentially drain your battery to the point where you can't start your car, you know, if you forget to turn off the radio overnight or something like that. Now there are some workarounds. A lot of modern radios have automatic shutoff timers that you can turn on, so it'll turn off the radio after it's been left on and not used for a little while. You might have an older radio that doesn't have that, or yours just might be a new radio that doesn't have that for some reason. Or you might just not like that feature, because sometimes you'll be driving on the highway, you know, on a really long trip. You'll have been driving for two hours, not really using the radio, just listening, and it'll turn off the power, because you haven't been using it, and it's wanting to make sure that you're not killing the battery. Um, so, you know, there's obviously an issue there, kind of a, a give and take, but what I found is this really cool product. It's by CGH, CZH Labs. This is called the uh, the D1021 model. It is a voltage, uh, low voltage disconnect circuit. This is a relay that goes from the battery to this, and then from this to the radio. And when the battery drops to a low enough voltage, and you can set that with these models, um, it'll cut off the power to save your battery. And it's available for 12 volt and 24 volt. Let's take a look at it because uh, it's marketed just towards general car use. You know, simple circuits, uh, not necessarily for ham radio. So we don't even know if it's going to work well for ham radio. So today what we're going to do is we're going to hook it up to some equipment. We're going to uh, try it out with an actual radio and just see how well it handles it and see if this could be an option for uh, us ham radio folk to uh, use it with our radios. All right, so you can see we've got the CZH Labs unit right here, and uh, it's hooked up right here to my modular power supply. This is a uh, Tektronix PS501-1 power supply, anywhere from 1 to 20 volts. It's 400 uh, milliamps, but that's okay. That's not very high power, but that's, that's plenty for this thing, because if it's drawing any significant amount of power, this itself would kill your battery. Um, so the fact that it's running off of here is already a, an already semi-decent sign. We've got this uh, uh, MM5, uh, MM500 uh, multimeter here. It's not the best in the world, but it's going to be very accurate for what we're doing here. Um, I recently tested it and calibrated it. It's doing just good. So what we're going to do is we're going to, uh, we've got it set to uh, about 13.8 volts. We're going to set it to on right now. This is override. You can see, there we go, 13.8 volts. Um, so let's look at here. Um, this is how you set when it's going to turn on and off. So uh, we're going to have it disconnect, we'll say at 11.4 volts. You can see that says that switch 3 should be on and switch 4 should be off. So we're going to say 3 for that to be on and 4 for that to be off. And on here, um, we're going to have it uh, reconnect it at a nice 12.1 uh, volts. Um, so set that one to on and leave this one off. Okay. So now that we have it set up, we're going to look for it to disconnect since we have it on and off at 11.4 volts. So we're going to start rolling it, uh, rolling it down. Um, we'll bring it down uh, rather rapidly past this point. And let's see, what is it? It's 11.4 that we're looking for. So a bit further. I'm going to set it at 11.5 for a solid. Um, whoop, we're past that. We're going to leave it here at 11.5, just make sure it doesn't cut off early, because this thing's going to be designed for um, uh, stuff running off of a battery, which means there's going to be dips uh, as you're powering something up that's very high power, so you wouldn't want it to turn off right away. So for instance, if I just drop it down and then bring it back up again, you can see it didn't turn off. That's good, because when you're first, say, transmitting 100 watts, it's going to drop the voltage a bit um, as it catches up. So let's drop it down to that 11.4 uh, volts, and let's just leave it here for a second and see how long it takes. If it does, in fact, turn off. And it, th this might be a little bit of a discrepancy um, as far as the voltage. All right, so it's not turning off yet. Let's turn it down a little bit more. I'm going to still keep on going down 11.3 volts. All right. And I did say, let's see. Oh, see. 
get someone on. Let's uh, scroll it back up a bit to 11.5. Set it to auto. Interestingly, it turned off at 11.5 volts. So let's roll her back up again. All right. So we're at 12.7 volts. Let's drop it down. Drop it down. We're going to leave it at 11.6 for a solid, uh, well, we'll do 11.5. Just leave it here for a solid second and see if it uh, turns off. It doesn't. And we're going to drop it down low like we did before for a second and then bring it back up again. Yep, that was good. All right. So let's drop it down to 11.4. We're going to leave it here. Let's see. All right, nothing yet. That's all right. A little bit lower within 11.4. A little bit lower. We're up to the high end of 11.3. There we go. All right. Just like that, cuts off power. See your voltage drops down here. It's a bit gradual, which is good. Um, and yeah, it's, it's totally off. And I'm looking at the current on here, and let me just minimize the current as much as I can and see if the overcurrent protection ever comes on. But we're just going to take a look and see how much power this thing's actually drawing. All right, right there. So it is using 10th of a milliamp. So that's reasonable, honestly. Um, so yeah, you wouldn't want to have this thing plugged into your battery and leave your car sitting for, I don't know, two months or something like that. It probably has some protection here as well. But because um, this little circuit's going to draw a little bit of power. But it's, it's very small, very small amount of power. And who knows how accurate that, that current uh, limiter there is. I, I wouldn't necessarily trust it. I haven't tested that thing out. The multimeter and the power I've tested. But So yeah, that's the basic idea of this thing is that, um, you know, it's going to cut off the voltage and as you turn it back up again, I don't know if you tested that, uh, it should turn it back on again at 12.1 volts. So let's let's give it a check and see when it turns it back on. Should be at 12 volts now. 12.2-ish. 12 12.3 12 volts. All right. Yeah, that's basically the idea. So as you're charging your battery up again, or as soon as it gets power from the altimeter, um, that'll that'll turn it on. But this is a really cheap option for um, uh, protecting your car battery, or even just having a simple battery protection circuit for your radio. You know, if you want to go portable, just strap this thing to the side of your battery, plug it in, and you don't have to worry about discharging it past you know uh, 10.1 volts or whatever. Um, that that's going to extend your life and your battery a lot. You could go a bit lower than that too. Um, but you'd still have enough power in an emergency to do whatever you wanted for a while. This is more designed for cars, though, where you really need that 10 volts at least uh, to, to drive that crank and start the car. But, um, but yeah, that's the end of the test. This thing, uh, this thing does check out. Uh, the only thing we need to do now is to check the, uh, the current limit on it. Um, not the current limit that it's uh, drawing, but the actual current limit of this thing. It's rated at, I think they said, uh, 20 amps. Um, so we're going to check that out and see how, how that looks. All right, so we've got the CZH Labs unit right here. Um, you can see that we have it hooked up to um, uh, this power supply right here. It's 20 amps. Uh, this is perfect for our testing. And uh, this right here should uh, give it a good test. Okay, so ignore these uh, red wires right here. I can see I have it the same color. Um, it's just I'm running out of wire, so it should be fine. I guarantee you it's, it's good on that end. It should be good. Um, and then right here we've got the uh, FT100D hooked up to it. Uh, which is a 100 watt HF radio, and we're going to just test it out. We've got this uh, amp meter here to see our amps usage, and uh, I, you can see it's not plugged in, so that's a problem. Let's solve that. Okay, and with the magic of video editing, it is now powered on, and um, you can see that we're using about 1.2 amps with this uh, FT100D just listening, um, and we're going to set it down to, we'll just set it to 30 watts to start. And let's uh, have an FM mode, and we're going to just key it up real quick. Uh, yeah. Whiskey 1, Bravo, Tango, Romeo, testing, testing, testing.
All right, so yeah, we can see it used around uh, just under 10 amps there, and uh, seems like it's going fine, so let's turn up the power. 100 watts now, full power. Whiskey 1 Bravo Tango Romeo testing. All right, and uh, you can see it, it did just fine. I mean, it's not a full um, long-term test, but uh, it, it did just fine. Um, we'd be seeing it turn off or something if it was having any serious issues, because it's just a relay. Uh, it should work just fine. It's really just as long as the circuits are well isolated, and they are, we know, because of that delay that we saw earlier as far as when it actually uh, kicks in. So, yeah, this seems like a great option for any ham radio setup. You know, might as well, if you're hardwiring into your battery, or if you've got a portable setup that you really don't want to discharge uh, more than, you know, uh, 60%, which can really, uh, this could really uh, extend the length of your, um, your battery. Oop. Uh, let's bring that up back up here. Yeah, this is, seems like a great option. It's uh, the CZH Labs LVD Low Voltage Disconnect Module. Um, it's, uh, they have it for 12 volts and 24 volts. Um, actually, I think they have like 36 and 48 volt as well, but for ham radio, we're really only going to be doing 12. And um, yeah, it's 25 bucks on Amazon right now for this little unit, and that seems like a pretty fair price um, for what it is. Uh, and mine as well, you know, it just seems like an extra little step of protection. Uh, you can just forget about anything else, and the, the fact that you can set it those little things on the side um, uh, really does add to its value. But yeah, so that's it for today. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed, and uh, I will catch you in the next video. If you did enjoy, uh, be sure to leave us a like, and uh, maybe give us a subscribe. Uh, also, let us know in the comments if there's anything that you liked, anything you hated, um, any feedback, and I'll take a look at it. Uh, thanks so much, and have a great day.